welcome our own senior economist, Ms. Carrie Ann Williams. All aboard, the strength to heal the nation. All aboard, all aboard, we depart from our frustration. All aboard, mental migration. All aboard, all aboard, with a brand new meditation. Yes, you can hear me. All right, so it's really a pleasure to be here to talk about one of, I think, our favorite topics that's inflation targeting. And I'm just going to tell you you're in for a treat. The panel is going to be very awesome. So look out. All right, so we're going to start by looking at our forecast and policy assessment system. This is the way that we actually get to targeting inflation. At the end of this, I want everyone to be well aware of what is happening behind the scenes. When BOJ says we're targeting inflation, what exactly are we doing, right? It sounds good, but what is, what is happening behind the scenes? So at the end, you should be well aware of that. All right, so we're gonna take this format. We're gonna look first at our main vehicle. This is our process that we use to target inflation. That's the forecast and policy assessment system. Then we're gonna go into exactly what are we targeting? How did we set this target? Then how and why do we need to generate forecasts, right? And the why is very important. Then we need to know policy decisions. When the governor is, is making his press release, his press briefings, what is the process that went into it and how were the, those decisions made? And now it's time to talk. The bread and butter of inflation targeting is communication. It doesn't work if you don't believe us or understand what we're doing. All right, so what is the FPAS, as we like to call it? This is the process that we use here at the bank, and I should stress, it is used almost universally at all central banks that focus on inflation targeting, right? So this is the process that we use here to develop comprehensive macroeconomic forecasts to support monetary policy decisions, and of course, all of this is geared towards achieving this inflation target. So that was a mouthful. So I need to just give you an idea of actually what happens. And I have a diagram here that pretty much gives you most of the steps that are involved in the process. We start by analyzing key economic developments. There is no way for us to tell you where the economy is going if we do not know where we are at the current point, right? So we spend a lot of time and energy in actually analyzing what's happening now. So on a daily basis, you'll find economists and central bankers here actually interacting with the financial institutions. We interact with Statin, we interact with PIOJ, we talk to RADA, we even have economists that go to the market, the municipal markets, to just to check what is happening. So we have a firm grasp of what is happening on the ground. Once we know this, we can then go ahead and produce short and medium term inflation forecasts. We have these nice baseline numbers, but it's important for us to have a firm grasp of the risks involved. And so we have to evaluate the risks around that baseline forecast and then quantify them. So whatever state of the world, we should be able to have a full you know, ventilation of that. You know, whatever eventuality that could happen. These baseline numbers look great. We have all the, the, the concepts perfect. But what if a hurricane comes? What if a, you know, a drought hits us? What if rain is too much? You know, all these issues we have to quantify. And so we do that by generating these policy scenarios. Based on the credibility or the probability of those scenarios, we then decide on the policy action. And once that's done, it's time to engage you. So you're actually seeing the end of a very involved process that takes at least six weeks, and we're gonna, we're gonna go even further into that. So what you're seeing is this monetary policy decision, and it takes one of three forms. It's either we're gonna increase the policy rate, we're gonna maintain it, or we're gonna reduce it. And this is a very simple you know, options that we have, uh, one of those three. All right, so now that we know that we have this whole internal process and we're doing all of this you know, behind the scenes, 
how did we actually come up to this target? Why are we going there? All right, so based on the own, our own bank's assessment, we would have recommended a target of 4 to 6% to the Ministry of Finance, and uh, it was subsequently approved. And this was way back in 2017. And the idea here was that the target would have been optimal given where we saw the growth in the economy going. So when we look and at where Jamaica is expected to go in terms of growth, this 4 to 6% would be consistent with that. It was also not chosen to be a target point, but a range to allow us some flexibility within that range. So if you see, you know, you can allow for more inflation variability to achieve this sort of economic development that you're looking for. All right, so we established this medium-term target, and what it does, it puts the power into the public's hands. So you are actually the ones now that basically hold the bank to, to account to either explain why we're below target or above target and to ensure that we are enacting policies to get us back into that spot that we said would be optimal for well-being and growth in the economy. Right, but the most important point is that policy is looking ahead. We cannot today enact any policy that's going to impact inflation tomorrow. It won't. It won't impact within a month. It takes time for people to change how they you know, access credit, how they demand. It takes time for the financial sectors to pass it through. It takes time for the productive sector to actually you know, grab on to the fact that things are changing. And when we did our own internal assessment, it said it would take at least four to eight quarters. So what it means is that the actions that the central bank enacted since 2017, they're now starting to take effect in full force, right? So it doesn't occur overnight. We even drilled further down into this four to eight, and we found that at least at around the five quarter mark is when you had the peak um, transmission or the peak effect. So you can think about just your daily lives. You don't immediately, if I come tomorrow, the central bank governor says tomorrow that interest rates are down 100 basis points, a massive down, massive drop. You cannot just go up tomorrow and access credit. It takes you time. You cannot just employ 500 more people. It takes time. And so that's the time that we're, we're focused on where it's working through the economy. All right, so since you know that we're looking ahead, we're looking at least four to eight quarters ahead, what is key then? We need to have a good crystal ball, right? We need to have a fix of where our main variable is going, that is inflation. And this is the process that I mentioned at the very beginning, the FPAS process. And this is what's going to give us that crystal ball effect. Not perfect. There are always going to be issues. But as long as we have this consistent framework, then we can be more confident that policy is in the right, right way. Okay. So we do this eight times per year, this assessment. And it's very comprehensive, very intense. We have four risk assessments and four comprehensive macro forecasts. And when I say comprehensive, I mean it, because we're covering all the possible things that could possibly impact inflation. So we're covering the external sector. We're looking at monetary policy decisions externally. We're looking at commodity price developments externally. We're canvassing you know, what's happening to demand externally, because all of that has an effect on the local economy. We also look at the fiscal accounts, the monetary accounts, the BOP, credit, interest rates, domestic growth, and ultimately the effects on inflation, right? So you can think about an economy today, right? Where, you know, things aren't not going well, there's not a lot of demand. What do you think would happen to, to labor in that economy? It would be very cheap. Labor is very cheap and so prices wouldn't move quickly, right? So we have to have a hand on all of that, all the indicators that could tell us or signal to us when we expect things to change, when we expect demand to pick up, because we know that actually has an effect on prices, right? So let me just give you a, a look. I have a diagram here that shows you pretty much how the, the process goes. 
And in that green box is a sector analyst. These are the economists here at BOG. They're the ones that are on the ground trying to give us a grasp of what is happening in the economy and generating forecasts over the next eight quarters. So once they do that, it gets fed into our quarterly projections model. Now this model was developed with the help of the IMF back in 2017. And I'll just say this for the very few economists that are in here. It's a semi-structural, open economy, applied dynamics, stochastic, general equilibrium, yeah, model, that's it. No more jargon, that's it for the day, right? No, no, <laughs> so I'll avoid that. But what it does, very simply, not, not looking at the jargon, all it does is it gives you a consistent way to look at how the, the developments in the economy will ultimate impact, ultimately impact policy right, to get inflation back to target. So I can give you an example. Suppose we hear that oil prices move by 50% in one day, they fall by 50%. This model, based on our economists' work, knows exactly how much that fall in oil prices is going to impact inflation. So we'd work out a parameter like that every 50% percent fall, impacts inflation by 0.2 percent, and so it's calibrated perfectly to achieve that over the time horizon that we, we anticipate. So if, another example, if there's a view that growth is going to pick up above where the economy can, can maintain that level, the quarterly projection model will see what the likely effect on inflation will be, right? So that's how that blue box works. It basically takes the work of the economists and ensure that it's a consistent framework so that we know how to enact policy. So we generate this medium-term forecast and we discuss this with our policymakers, right, with the governor. His views as well as, you know, the views of the committee gets fed back into the quarterly projection model. So if there's any issues that were not contemplated during this forecast round, this is where we, we pull them back in. Generate forecasts again, do as many iterations as required, and then a policy decision is made. Right, right so this is the main result of that FPAS process. Now you see we did a whole lot of work. We were very thorough in terms of the the sectors that are impacting inflation, we discussed it intensely, and we nuanced the whole thing so it's not just you know, putting numbers into a, into a, into a model, right? So this is the, the end result. And I just want to spend some time explaining exactly what it is. The goal is, when you see this presented at the QMPR, you should be able to almost preempt what the policy decision is, right? You should be able to look at this and form an opinion on what the central bank, if not, if not enacted now, will be enacting in the future, right? So first, you see two highlighted bars, and that's the target, four to six. So we'd be very, very happy if inflation just moves up to five and stays there. We would, we would say, okay, everything is optimal, growth is optimal, you know, demand in the economy is in the right place, and of course, it has to be at that point based on those things, not based on shocks and all those other things. So once the economy is churning at the right rate, wages are at the right rate, unemployment is at the right level, we'd be at five and we'd be happy at this point, right? So. That five is the, the light blue line in the middle. The black line is going to be inflation. And you can see we have a lot of volatility inflation. And since around 2017, the last latter half of 2017, the majority of inflation outturns, they've been below 4%, right? But luckily, moving upwards in our forecast horizon based on the policy actions and other considerations that we have enacted. So I want to point out that the, the colors on the, on the graph gives you a lot of clues as well. So when you see very light colors, it means that is a